Today I'm talking about one of the most hyped men's designer fragrances in recent years. This is the very popular La Nuit de Lomme by Yves Saint Laurent. And to find out more about this one, stay tuned to Mags Frags. Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is day 111 of my Fragrance 365 project, where I give my thoughts on a different fragrance every day for a whole year. So today's scent of the day is La Nuit de Lomme uh, from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. And if you're like me and your French is absolutely terrible, the name of the fragrance stands for The Night of the Man. Or is it The Man of the Night? I'm not too sure. But anyway, it was launched in 2009 and it's described as a woody, spicy fragrance for men. Uh, since its launch, there's been countless flankers and spin-off special editions due to the popularity of the original blend. And speaking of original blends, apart from Creed Aventus, I can't think of another fragrance that gets talked about as much as this one does in terms of reformulations and how the recent batches don't compare to vintage batches, etc. But today I'm swerving well clear of that path and letting you know my opinion on this as if it was just a standalone fragrance that was a brand new release from 2021. So into the presentation and the fragrance is available in four sizes. Um, it's available in a 40 milliliter, a 60 milliliter, a 100 milliliter and the 200 milliliter bottle size and that's a bit of a tongue twister but this one is the 100 milliliter variant so the box uh, comes it's quite a plain box uh, very stylish it's a mixture of matte black and gloss black and then we've got some metallic chrome accents including the brand logo and the fragrance name on the top we've got another YSL logo, uh, on the back we've got loads of product information and the barcode and then underneath we've got the batch code which is 33S200K. The bottle comes in a cylindrical glass bottle which feels quite chunky and weighty and this has a black to clear tinted gradient which allows you to see the juice which is kind of a desaturated khaki green colour. We have the name of the fragrance on the front, which is printed in black, and then a large polygon shaped plastic click on cap, which is actually bigger than the uh, the bottle if you buy the 40 mil size. Uh, and I think that looks a little bit odd, a little bit odd. Uh, but on top, you've got the YSL logo. There's a black atomizer, uh, which sprays a really decent amount of juice. And overall, I really like the presentation on the uh, on this one especially, and all the others uh, in the Nuit de Lomme line, uh, because when they're all lined up, you get all the different color uh, colorways and variants and whatever. I think they look really smart when they're lined up together. So presentation, nine out of 10. The top notes in this one are bergamot, and lavender in the heart there's cardamom and caraway and in the base there's virginia cedar and vetiver this opens up with a bittersweet blend of cardamom and lavender and has a moderate spiciness the bergamot provides an initial blast of freshness but it's quite fleeting and it's not long before the cardamom becomes the overall dominant note which is supported by a light lavender and a fairly light woodiness from the base notes. I wouldn't say this is a, a complex scent in any way and what you get from the first spray is pretty much what you get for the whole life of the fragrance. I have to admit that when I first tried it, I wasn't instantly impressed by it, but not because I didn't like the smell. It was more of the fact that it gets hyped so much that I just expected it to be this miraculous golden nectar that made me go crazy like uh, a cat with a catnip toy. Uh, but what you actually get is a somewhat delicate and unassuming scent with a mild peppery garnish. However, this is definitely one where the more you wear it, the more it grows on you. And I've got to say that this, this one now I absolutely love. But if you haven't tried it, just don't set your expect, expectations as high as, I, as high as I did and you'll absolutely love it. It's a unique fragrance that has a very interesting and alluring bitterness. 
that you never want to stop smelling. It's quite difficult kind of to describe because we associate the word bitterness with something that makes you want to kind of screw your face up. Uh, but in this case, it's the accord that's the most attractive and the most intoxicating. The lavender is bright and airy. The vetiver adds a touch of dusty dryness and everything just blends together perfectly to produce a very, very elegant and easy to wear fragrance. This is pretty much an anytime, anywhere and for any age range sort of fragrance. It's extremely versatile and it's often said to be the perfect office scent uh, due to its uh, inoffensive nature, which I definitely would agree with. It may not be loud enough to wear as a clubbing scent or to wear during the coldest months of winter, but for a date night you'd struggle to uh, find something better than this one. It's one I personally tend to wear casually, uh, but this would also be great dressed up in a suit to wear for a special occasion. It's an extremely charming and elegant scent, and I can't wait to break this one out again in the uh, springtime. Yeah, much is made of uh, the performance on this compared to vintage formulations, but in all honesty, I don't find the performance on this to be too bad at all um, compared to a lot of other recent releases. And compared to some I've purchased recently, this is positively beast mode. Um, it may not fill a room, but I can definitely catch wafts of it for a good four to five hours. And it must have adequate pro uh, projection because it never fails to get noticed whenever I wear it and get me compliments. So I would say it's got moderate projection and maybe five or six hours of longevity. La Nuit de Lom, uh, in my opinion, is a must-own fragrance. If somebody was just starting to build a, a collection and wanted me to recommend 10 cents to get them started on the journey, then this would be one of the first on the list. Yes, it may not be as potent as it was 10 years ago, uh, but compared to all the other new designer releases, I think it still holds its own. It's not a super scent like some people make it out to be, but it is a very solid, unique and likeable fragrance and it gets better and better the more you wear it. And I'd still give this one a solid 9 out of 10. Yes, yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's scent of the day. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking about a very underrated designer fragrance from 2019 that never really gets spoken about that much. So make sure you tune in tomorrow to see which one I'm talking about. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And it's also great to hear your thoughts, your opinions and your critiques on all other fragrances that feature in the 365 project. So keep your comments coming down in the comments section. So as always, thank you once again very much for tuning in. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye bye for now.